What's up everybody and welcome back to another math puzzle. In this one, the question is as follows. Only numbers one, two, three, four, and five can be used to get the red numbers with the blue operations with one instance of each number per row and column. So what this means is, let's say if I have a one here, I cannot have another one in this column or in this row, right? And same thing if I have a five here, there can be no more fives in this row or this column. Last but not least, what you can see is this box, for example, needs three numbers that when you multiply them, it gets to 30. This box right here is two numbers that when you add them, it gets to nine. Hit that pause button and see if you can figure it out. When you're ready, hit play and I'll give you the explanation. All right, so when we start off with a puzzle like this, the first thing I'm gonna notice is there's certain boxes that just have a single number. Those are gonna be really easy to fill in, so I'm gonna start there. For example, this one is a one, so I'll throw a one in here, and down here we have a two, so I'm gonna throw a two in right there. Now I'm gonna try and go to the boxes where I have the fewest options in terms of getting either the products or the quotients. So in order to get 40, I've really only got one way in terms of three numbers, one through five multiplying each other, and that's gonna be, and that's gonna be two times four times eight. Now again, I already know that I have a two here, so I can't have a two there. So two is gonna be either here or here. Now for the fours and fives, I'm either gonna have a four here, here, or here, and a five here, here, or here. But the bottom line is I know that these three numbers have to occur in these three boxes. Now I'm gonna go to the quotient of three. Now with numbers one through five, I really only have one way to do it. And that's either gonna be with three and one or one and three. Next, I'm gonna come down to the six. Now this is pretty interesting because if I'm adding to six, I could do it with a one and five or two and four. But again, I've already got a two in this row, so that means it's gotta be one and five. Now we can start to eliminate some positions because we know for a fact one has gotta be in one of these positions, meaning we know that the one in this row is either here or here. That means you cannot have a one here, which tells me that three has to be in this position, which means therefore that one has to be here. Now also, since I have one and then two, four, five in these three positions, the remaining number in this row is three, and that means three has to go here. Also, since I have one and five in these two spots, I know that four has to be here. So now you can see we can make some more conclusions. So since these three numbers are adding to eight, three plus four is seven, this remaining position has to be a one. Next, I'm gonna look at the nine. Now with numbers one through five, the only way we're gonna add up to nine is with a four and a five. So I know four or five have to go in these two spots. Now also here to have a difference of two when one and three are gone, the only other way to do it is five and three or two and four. But again, three is gone here. So I know that in these two positions, it's gotta be a four and a two. And so since that means that I 100% have a four in one of these two spots, this spot up here cannot have a four, which means that this upper position is five. This position right here, therefore, must be a four. Now, since I have a four here, I cannot have a four here. Now, moving up here, I can see that I have one, three, and four in these positions. That means these two positions can either be two or five. All right, so now that we got this filled in, I can see that I already have a five right here, which means I can't have a five there. That one's out that means this has got to be a two and that means this one down here has to be a five now since i know that this is multiplying to 30 two times five is 10 so the third number here has to be three now in these positions we've got three numbers multiplying to eight there's really only two ways to do that you could have two times two times two which isn't going to work right we can't have multiple twos in the same column or row, or we could have one times two times four, and that's probably gonna be what it's gonna be. So let's write those numbers out. So right off the bat, since I have a one here, this one cannot be one. And since I have a two in this column, two cannot be here. And since I have a one here, one cannot be there. So now I know that this position is four, and if that one's four, this can't be four, which means this position is one. And since one times four is four, the last position needs to be two. Now we can do some other things, right? Since I got a two here, this cannot be a two. Since I have a four here, this cannot be a four. Also, since I have a four here, this can't be a four. Since I have a two here, this can't be a two. So now we got five in this position, which means five is out of this one and this one, and that means we got a four here and a two here. Now, since I have a one up here, this can't be a one. And so if that's a five, this has to be a one. Now, since we have one, two, four, and five here, that middle spot has to be a three. And since we have one, two, three, four going this way, this spot has to be a five. 
And since I have one, two, four, five in this row, this spot has to be a three. Now, just to double check, three plus three is six plus five is 11. So that satisfies these three. Five plus one is six here. And pretty much every other row and column looks great. So this is how you do it. Done. I hope you guys enjoyed this math puzzle. And if you did, please click that like button. If you want to see more math puzzles on the regular, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining. See you in the next video. Take it easy.